Hi, I'm Dr. Paul Dignan. I'm an outcomes and evaluation expert. And what I'm talking about here is how to build an inputs, outputs, outcomes, structured program logic model, or sometimes people call them uh, outcomes models. A program logic model is a model which simply sets out all of the steps that we're going to take in order to get through to higher level outcomes. Program logic models can be built in various ways. For instance, the way I'm talking about here is when we divide the model up into headings to look at different levels within the model. There's a range of ways that people divide it up under these headings. The way I'll be using here today is talking about inputs, activities, outputs, intermediate outcomes, and final outcomes. There are more freeform ways of setting up program logics, and there's another video talking about ways you can do it in a more freeform approach. The purpose of dividing a program logic up in this way is because it helps when we're talking to stakeholders about a program, it helps us do two things. The first one is emphasize the importance of moving up the outcomes hierarchy. So if someone talks about an output or an input, then we can immediately ask them, well, why are you doing that? And give us, ask them to give us their intermediate outcome, which is the reason for which they're doing that input, or they have that input or have that output. The second reason is that it's useful to define a level of outputs, because these are the things usually for which a program is held to account. And it's really good to have them identified in the program logic model. Here I'm using DoView Outcomes and Evaluation software to set out a program logic model which is represented under the headings uh, Inputs, Activities, Outputs, uh, Intermediate Outcomes and Final Outcomes. Let's have a wee look at an example and I'm going to turn to an example here of a smoking reduction program. And we have there the program logic model. This one's been drawn in a left to right fashion. You can build them in uh, bottom to top fashion also. What we have under inputs is a list of the inputs uh, for the program and there are things like staff, sufficient staff numbers and sufficiently skilled staff and then we move on from them to looking at the activities and we have some here which is sufficient cons consultation with stakeholders, information collected on causes and solutions to smoking, media campaign designed etc, the activities of the project and then there causing a range of outputs, which are the goods and services produced by the program. For instance, a stakeholder advocacy coalition formed, a media campaign, pamphlets and posters, etc. And then the reason for doing those outputs is listed in the intermediate outcomes column. And that may be national laws restricting smoking, changed attitudes towards smoking, more knowledge about the hazards of smoking, etc. And then that in turn leads on to reduce smoking, and reduced illness and death. When we're working in this way with a program logic model, we can then put onto it various other additional information. For instance, here, what I'm doing is next to reduce smoking, I'm inserting an indicator, which is a measure of that. And we're putting here self-reported smoking rates as an indicator. I could actually then click out um, on that indicator and see a graph, which for instance, shows me how those self-reported smoking rates are tracking over time. Equally, I can put, if I want to, onto the model, evaluation questions, and I'm inserting an evaluation question here. Did the media campaign reduce smoking? And that's an evaluation question which I'll be answering um, as part of an evaluation, for instance. And then lastly, I can include evidence, and I'm looking here at putting some evidence about the relationship between a media campaign and changes in attitudes to smoking, knowledge about smoking, and reducing smoking rates. And you can see that I could click out to that evidence behind the link which is in the model. What I've been talking about here is how we can build a program logic or an outcomes model which is set out under a set of headings, outputs, uh, intermediate outcomes, and final outcomes as a way of structuring the way we're thinking about a program and the way we can then put other additional information in on top of that. Thank you very much.